The movie begins on the planet Pandora, where Jake Sully is narrating his life since becoming the leader of the Omatakaya clan of Navi. He and Neytiri have become parents to Neteim, Loke, and Tuk. They also have an adopted daughter named Kiri, who is the biological daughter of Grace Augustine's Navi avatar. The children spend time with a human boy named Spider, who was left behind on Pandora with the scientists when the previous group evacuated. Although the children see Spider as a cousin, Neytiri thinks he should be with other humans because of her hatred of the Sky People. Despite the apparent happiness, Jake's world is shattered when RDA ships start landing on Pandora, destroying parts of the forest and killing the wildlife. Jake and Neytiri get their children and the other Navi to safety. They watch in horror as the destruction continues. A year later, Colonel Miles Quaritch wakes up in his own avatar body, realizing that he had been killed during the previous mission. After watching his own video log, he sets out to lead a team back to Pandora to kill Jake. The RDA has colonized Pandora and built a mining base along with a settlement called Bridgehead City. Jake leads a group of Navi to attack the humans' aircraft and supply lines. Neteim and Lope try to join the fight, but Jake stops them, warning them about the danger. After the fight, Jake returns to his camp with the rest of the clan. He discusses with Neytiri how the changes are affecting their children's lives. Meanwhile, Spider, Loke, and Kiri visit the human's research facility, where Norm Spellman and Max Patel continue to work. Kiri talks to Grace's avatar, while Spider expresses his resentment towards his father, Quaritch. Quaritch and his team meet General Ardmore, who updates them on operations since Quaritch's death. Ardmore tells them about the Omatakaya's advantages and how they can gain the upper hand. As they enter the forest, Jake's kids and Spider are playing there. The kids spot Quaritch and his team surveying the former Link unit for the humans and their avatars, while Kiri enjoys the nature. Quaritch finds his skeleton inside the AMP suit where he was killed. The villains find the kids and realize they are Jake's kids because they have five fingers. Quaritch meets Spider and realizes he is the boy's father. Quaritch calls in Ardmore and her squad while he takes the other kids as hostages. Jake and Neytiri arrive and are stunned to see their nemesis alive and in a Navi body. Neytiri kills some of Quaritch's team before they open fire. She and Jake manage to get their kids back, but Quaritch and his surviving teammates fall back, taking Spider with them. Ardmore subjects the boy to torture to get information on the clan's location, but Quaritch stops her and tries to gain Spider's trust. He convinces Spider to ride along with him on their mission, or else the scientists will experiment on him. Jake decides to leave the clan to protect their children from being targeted. He passes leadership to another warrior and leaves with Neytiri and their children. They head towards the eastern seaboard to the Mitkaina clan of Navi. The clan's leader, Tano Ari, and his pregnant wife, Ronal, gather with them. Jake requests shelter, but Ronal and other tribesmen look down on Jake and his kids for their half-human heritage. Tano Ari respects Jake's accomplishments and allows them to stay. He instructs his children to show Jake's children how to adapt to their oceanic surroundings. Quaritch and his team take Spider through the forest, with Spider becoming their translator for the Navi language. Quaritch also manages to link himself to his own Ikrin, albeit more forcefully than the Omatakaya did. A Anung, Sireya, and Rokso are joined by Jake's children as they explore the reef. Sireya uses sign language to communicate with underwater creatures, just like the Omatakaya does with their animals. Lok tries to connect with a creature but is quickly thrown off and pulled through the water. Kiri, on the other hand, has a more natural connection with the creatures and helps one of them interact with Tuk. Jake and Neytiri are taught how to fly the Tsurik, which can move in both air and water. Lok seeks Tsireya's guidance to improve his breathing underwater. With the help of creatures that provide air when resting on their backs, Tsireya takes him and his sisters deeper into the water. However, A Anung and Rokso's negative attitude toward Kiri, being a half-breed, leads to Lok punching A Anung in the face. The fight escalates when A Anung's friends join in, and Jake scolds his sons for their behavior. Jake forces Lok to apologize to A Anung, which he does. In return, A Anung invites Lok to go hunting with him and his friends. They go far enough to trick Lok into going after a creature, and he and his mount are attacked by an Akula. The Akula kills Lok's mount and chases after him. Lok tries to swim back up but is saved by a Tulkun named Paikin. Lok removes a harpoon stuck in Paikin's fin and earns his trust. Kiri tells Jake that she feels different lately and can feel the heartbeat of their goddess Iwa, which she believes is powerful. Jake reassures her that she's not crazy. When Lok returns, Tano Ari scolds A Anung for leading him beyond the reef, but Lok takes the blame for everything to spare A Anung from getting in trouble. Jake tells Lok that he has shamed the family, but A Anung comes to respect him. Lok shares his encounter with Paikin with his siblings, 
Syria, and the other Midkaina. Syria informs Lok that Paikin is considered an outcast among the other Tulkun. Lok tries to communicate with Paikin to learn more about his history. Syria takes the group to the cove of their ancestors, where she shows them the land during the eclipse. She also guides them underwater to the Midkaina Tree of Souls, where Kiri connects with Grace. However, Kiri suffers a terrible seizure, and her siblings bring her back to the shore. Jake enlists the help of Norm and Max to revive Kiri, but they are unable to do so until Ronal steps in and successfully brings Kiri back. Norm suggests that Kiri's visions could be a symptom of frontal lobe epilepsy. However, their moment of relief is short-lived when Lyle Wainfleet, a member of Quaritch's team, informs them of a radar detection from the gunship that brought Norm and Max. The villains seek to gain an advantage over Jake and his family by teaming up with a whaling vessel operated by Captain Mick Scoresby and Dr. Ian Garvin, who hunt Tulkun for anti-aging remedies. The Mitkaina share a strong bond with their Tulkun, including Ronal and her soul sister Roa. Quaritch and his team arrive and kill a Tulkun mercilessly, threatening to harm a Mitkaina woman unless they reveal Jake and his family's location. Spider tries to stop his father, but the villains set fire to the trees and homes of the Mitkaina. Quaritch orders an attack to draw Jake to them. Lok tries to communicate with Paikin once again to understand why he is considered an outcast. Paikin allows Lok to enter and link with him, and Lok sees Paikin's memories. He discovers that Paikin attacked the whalers because they killed his mother and family. Lok attempts to relay this information to the Mitkaina, but Jake tries to silence him to avoid further upsetting them. However, Sireya believes in Lok and supports him. The whalers launch a brutal attack on the Tulkun, injuring Roa and her child with harpoons filled with inflatables. Ronal and other Mitkaina arrive at the scene, and Ronal cries out in pain at the loss of her soul sister and her child. Tanoari and Ronal, along with other angry Mitkaina, blame Jake for leading the villains to their land, which they knew would result in tragedy. Jake warns them that the whalers will continue to track and kill more Tulkun, and urges them to warn the remaining creatures. Lok disregards Neteum's warning and sets off to warn Paikin. Accompanied by Tsireya and Aonung, they are later joined by Kiri and Tuk. When they find Paikin, they discover he has already been hit with a tracker. Neteum contacts Jake to alert him, and together with Neytiri, they head off to rescue the children. The whalers begin their attack, targeting the kids and Tulkun. Jake and Neytiri are joined in the fight by the Mitkaina warriors. However, the children are captured in the struggle and taken prisoner on the whalers' vessel. Upon Jake's arrival, Quaritch orders him to stand down, holding Lok at gunpoint. Jake is ready to surrender himself until Paikin jumps out of the water and slams onto the vessel, taking down some whalers in the process. This moment gives the Navi the chance to charge into battle, and with the help of Paikin and the Mitkaina, they manage to kill most of the whalers. Scoresby attempts to harpoon Paikin, but he wraps the wire around the boat, killing the men and severing Scoresby's arm in the process. Kiri uses her powers to manipulate the ocean environment, which kills some whalers, and Spider rejoins his Navi family. In the midst of the battle, Neteum rescues his siblings and friends, but he is shot. The family attempts to help Neteum, but he dies from his wounds. Neytiri grieves for her son, and the rest of the family is devastated. Quaritch contacts Jake and reveals that he is Kiri and Tuk as hostages. Jake, accompanied by Neytiri, Spider, and Lok, heads toward the sinking vessel for the final showdown. Neytiri ruthlessly kills Quaritch's team in retaliation for Neteum's death. After Jake frees Tuk, Quaritch emerges with Kiri and holds a knife to her throat. Neytiri threatens Spider's life in return. Quaritch finally relents and lets Kiri go after Neytiri cuts Spider across his chest. Neytiri brings the children to safety, and Jake fights Quaritch to death, ending their conflict. As the vessel begins to sink, the family is trapped underwater. Jake engages in a fierce battle with Quaritch, ultimately putting him in a chokehold and allowing him to sink. Lok discovers his father, who is on the brink of giving up, but Lok uses the breathing techniques taught to him by Tsireya to help him survive. Together with Paikin, they make their escape. Meanwhile, Kiri calls upon the underwater creatures to rescue Neytiri and Tuk. Spider tries to save Quaritch, but he chooses to abandon him and join Jake's family. Jake welcomes Spider as his son. Jake plans to say goodbye to Tanoari, but he is told that his family is now part of the Mitkaina and can stay. The family then holds a funeral for Neteum, and they offer his body to the Tree of Souls, where he is reunited with Iowa. By connecting with the Tree of Souls, Jake and Neytiri are able to see Neteum through their memories. Jake realizes that this land is now their new home and pledges to protect and fight for his family. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment and let us know which film you want us to explore next. Take care.